Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode three of the final season of Better Call Saul. The first two episodes that came out last week were just tense, tension racking, man. Um, I don't know how the show does it, dude. I really don't. But like I was gritting my teeth and just holding on to my chair like throughout pretty much every scene. Even the ones where you wouldn't think anything tense is really actually happening, man. I love this show so much, dude. I really do. And I'm just worried about pretty much everybody but Saul. Because <laughs> I know where he ends up. Obviously, Mike and Gus as well. But still, most other people, like, I'm just like, especially Nacho and Kim, man. I, I'm just like praying, <laughs> praying they make it out okay guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into this one. So if you're part of the 62% of people that are just kind of lurking, maybe watching the channel, not subscribing, all that jazz, maybe you're just new and tuning in for the first time here today. I really hope if you enjoy this reaction, maybe you'll make the decision to hit that subscribe button and maybe even leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. It does really help out the channel. If you want to see the full length reaction to this episode or any of the previous ones, you can check those out over on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, it gets you access as well. It really does help us expand and improve on the videos that come over here to you guys over on the YouTubes. So of course, along with the reactions for this series, you get the same thing for all the other ones that we cover here on the channel, as well as a bunch of exclusive movie reactions where you actually get to help decide what we add to that list every month. Monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage, trying to make it worth your while since you guys are going out of your way to support the channel. But of course, I know not ever can do that. And a simple way you can help us out is just by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing these videos because it really does go a long way with helping us in that YouTube algorithm, guys. So, but that all said and down the way, let's hop into episode three, a rock and a hard place. Great. Here we go. Ah, uh, did they check that man? I mean, you're bottled in. <laughs> and you can't stop coughing, man. It's gonna keep echoing, man. Oh, I don't know about this, dude. What is that? Like, what's in here? Oil? It looks so thick. I mean, it probably has all kinds of dirt, must, and water, and whatever, all mixed in here. Oh, God. Like, there's no way he would know, like, how long he needs to be down there. It's just gonna be however long he can hold it, man. What if they... What if they had just not... Coming over here, man. What are they just like waited, lingered, pondered, and ah, the timing. <laughs> Sweaty. <laughs> I mean, he'd be able to at least hear the footsteps on it because it would resonate and amplify while he's down there. So, I mean, that would be a way he could gauge when or how long he needs to stay down there, too, I guess. I guess it's oil. Is the residue that it left on him? I don't know. Está bien, okay. No hay problema. Pa que se lave. Disculpe, tiene un teléfono? Le puedo pagar. Allá. Adelante. Gracias. Oh, something bad's gonna happen to him, isn't it? Kindness does not go rewarded this show. Hmm. His dad's shop. Just making sure he's alive. Dad. It's me. Nacho. See, sí, Papa. Solo quería. Escuchar tu voz. <laughs> ya hemos hablado de esto muchas veces. Ya sabes lo que tienes que hacer. A la policía. ¿Qué más queda de decir? ¿Mm? Adiós, hijo. God, man. 
so much, so many emotions running through him, and these in this performance, dude, I just love it. Hmm. Oh, wrapping back around. Is that bastard with you? Hmm. <laughs> Put him on. <laughs> he wants to talk to you. Yes. God, I love this show, man. It's so good. Even if I disappear, everyone's gonna smell your stink all over it. The only way that this works for you is with me dead. All right. Whatever bullshit way you want the story to go, I will make it go. But, my dad, I need to know that he'll be safe. Your dad's gonna be okay. How do you know? Because anyone who goes after him is gonna have to come through me. I love, I love the like, kind of like trust and partnership that just managed to just like blossom between Mike and Nacho, man. Oh my God. So good. Oh, and he left him the money anyway. We're saying we want uh, the right year and model, mint condition, no less, and then get it painted. Plus we want to get the custom plates. I not enough time. What if we use the real car? I mean, like his real car. His car. That's a bit direct. Valet scam. Hmm? How does that work? Oh, <clears throat> it wouldn't be me. This has got Huell's name written all over it. I'm sure you recognize this man. Mm. One Jorge de Guzman. This, this is Eduardo Salamanca. Same person. That's news to me. How did this come to light? He died in a massive firefight at his compound. Over a half dozen people were killed. That's terrible. But where are you going with this? Bear with me. <laughs> Let me explain how this looks from where I stand. A couple of years back, Jimmy McGill represented Ignacio Varga. And now, here he is, representing Eduardo Salamanca under the assumed name de Guzman. What are you getting at? Are you building some kind of case against Jimmy? No. No one is, at the moment. You want Jimmy to rat on a cop? <laughs> He's a lawyer and a human being. And I think he knows what's right. Damn, man. Damn. <sighs> what's Kim gonna do? What's the play? <laughs> Wow. Holy shit. When? Tomorrow. Boss says he looks too pretty. <laughs> you want me to take care of it? No. I'll do it. Now get the hell out of here. Gotta make it look real, right? Let's get it over with. First things first. Tony, good to see you. How's nice to see you? Ain't econ, Mr. Hamlin. Ah, good for you. Keep it up. What is going to happen to this car, dude? What is going to happen? Sorry, sir. Get out. Took the keys. Excuse me. Those nimble fingers, man. Let's go, yo. Man, these shots. This stairwell shot, dude. They had to build that stairwell, I'm putting. With that rig on the back side like that? Damn. Whew. 
He did it. Holy half. Erickson seems to think that if Lalo lied to you and you didn't know about the pseudonym that you could break confidentiality. She wants you to talk. She says it's right. They don't have anything on you. It's just a fishing expedition to see if you bite. You think I should do it? It depends. I guess it's basically, do you want to be a friend of the cartel or do you want to be a rat? It's not a great choice. Both is bad. Ah. Oh. You'll handle it. He puts me down, you mean? It'll be over quick. I'm not okay with this. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> uh, everything has me so nervous. We still don't know whose car that was at the end of the last episode, creeping up and following Jimmy. The timeline's been a little jostled. I know some people have said it looked like Mike's car, but Mike seems to have been here and still involved with all of this the entire time. So I don't know. Again, unless there's some timeline shenanigans, I don't see how that would have been Mike. Like I said before, I felt like it was setting it up that it was Lalo, but again, what we saw last of Lalo didn't seem to line up with that either. So I'm, I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea right now. Oh, I'm just so fucking nervous <laughs> about everything right now, man. Even though like a third of these characters I already know what happens to them. How do they do this, man? The show's so good. That was what was it. That was the glass shard from the opening. He busted the glass. He's going to, he's going, my Lord. <laughs> See, I wasn't too sure. Cause they, they knew what they were doing with that camera, man. We went from that shard of glass to the broken glass all over his truck. So I was like, okay, maybe something happens with the truck. Maybe that's leftover glass from the shootout. Maybe it was something else. Nah, nah. Ha! Vince Gilligan, you're a fucking genius. Today you are going to die. Was Alvarez. Los Ojos out of Peru. They paid me to set up your nephew. <laughs> he doesn't believe him. Alvarez has been paying me for years. Years, but you know what? I would have done it for free because I hate every last one of you psycho sacks of shit. I put you in that chair. Oh, wow. I switched them for sugar pills. You twisted fuck. Let's do you. Oh. Oh. went off his own terms. He didn't want anybody else to do it. Didn't give them the satisfaction of being the ones to put him down. <sighs> didn't want Mike to have to do it either. Look at these assholes just fucking...
God. Well, his fate was a question mark. He was one of the very few whose fate was a big old question mark. We didn't know their outcome, and I, I held on to hope maybe he was still out there, but... Michael Mondo, man, he's a fucking boss. He gave such a really good performance in this episode, too. Well, that's a side plot trimmed out. That's one of our storylines that we've come to the end of, so we're going to be focusing in more on uh, Lalo and Jimmy, uh, I have to imagine now, especially now that some of the other lawyers have uh, put two and two together after everything that was going on before with uh, de Guzman piecing together everything that happened with him and then Salamanca. Ugh. And now they're trying to see what direction Jimmy's going to go. Will he play ball with them, rat on the cartel, or will he feign ignorance or continue to be a friend of the cartel? And I, I'm not that one. I'm not really all that sure how it would play out and how it would affect the main timeline because we know that he deals with Gus, we know that he deals with Mike, and they are tied to the cartel, but they are the opposite side of the cartel. Like they are actively working their own operation and against the cartel. Um, I don't know how much he knows this. But we only ever really see him interact mostly through Mike and um, uh, Gus in Breaking Bad. So, like, I'm wondering, I mean, that could be, he. I mean, I don't see how long he'd live, though, if he turned rat. So he's got to keep it buried up. He's got to... I have to imagine he's got to stay playing ball with the cartel or feign ignorance about the whole situation and keep his client privilege going. Kim honestly seems like she legitimately doesn't really know what the right play is in this moment. But like, I like that their whole thing with Howard, their whole scheme, that was like something she was really honed in on. You know, that was like her, that was almost like all she was thinking out about every scene, aside from like here and there when she'd mentioned something going on with one of her clients. But then the second this happened, she was just locked in on that. She's involved in that, but that's not going to come to light more than likely. Um, so like, oof, that like overrode the whole thing. I came back, there was no more progression on like their little Howard plan. And, you know, it comes back to this whole, like, right or wrong, doing God's work and all that sort of thing. Like, because Huel is like, why are, you, why are you doing this? And all this stuff. So, like, there's this whole, like, question of, like, right or wrong morality. And it even came down to the same kind of conversation as well with the other lawyer that Kim was talking to. And he was like, you know, I might not like Saul. I might not like Jimmy. But I do believe down deep down there is a good lawyer in there. And he does care about doing the right thing. But I think it's a little more complicated than that at this point. Um, man, Hector and all of them, like just the way Nacho laid into all of them. He still played by Gus's rules. He didn't sell Gus out. Actually, what he did, I actually think it came off more natural and more believable of a performance, of a script. Even though he went off script, he didn't say exactly what they wanted him to say, but I think the way he went about it and the way he played that whole situation, he made it his own. Which in turn made it more believable to dissuade any suspicion away from Gus. And the one person we didn't catch up with on this episode was Lalo. And I was talking about the car, man. I still think somehow... Whatever I read about that scene incorrectly before, I think Lalo is the one that was uh, camping out Jimmy and Kim. Um, their storyline seems to be the only one that was playing out linearly from where we left off last. 
We saw some things overlap as we caught up from Nacho's perspective up to where we left off with Gus and Mike with the phone call. So I would have to imagine the tailing incident had already happened, or maybe it's not, or maybe it hasn't happened. Maybe we're not caught up yet or present day with Jimmy and Kim yet. Um, I, I saw a small flicker of the preview for the next episode before I could pause it, and I see Kim looking in a, the rearview mirror and noticing somebody's following her, and yet I still can't make out that silhouette, man. Just from the minor shape of the head, it just gives, it makes me think it's Lalo. And that's the only thing that could like tie into their whole thing and throw off their whole plan is if Lalo shows back up on the scene because he knows they're, they're both involved somehow and he's going to come to them probably yet again, not being out of their lives. And with this, I mean, I, I feel there's like no reason for Jimmy to learn the truth about what happened to Ignacio either. So that could leave, it open for him to not know their fates once we catch up to modern day. Man, I'm I'm gonna miss Nacho, dude. He was one of my favorite additions to all of this. The thing is, there was only a few options for him. Either he is in the lamb, he's on the lamb. He's in hiding, he's out there somewhere, or he died. Uh, he's, it was really one of the only two options. And that's kind of the only two fates, really, for Lalo, is he's out there, again, on the lamb in hiding, or something happens and he doesn't survive all of this. I mean, he's already believed to be dead, at least by the public, unless something happens that he re you know, reveals his hand once he's back in Albuquerque, if he's back in Albuquerque. But again, like I said, it looked like he turned around and went away from the state line. You know, he decided not to go with those immigrants in the truck. He told them to try to go somewhere else. He went away, and I could have swore he was drove, driving away from the, the border from when we saw that mile marker for the, for the uh, United States border. So then again, it just comes back to who the fuck is driving this car? Because I don't think it's Mike. That doesn't really add up to me. But I know some people said it looked like Mike's car. Then it looks like it's Mike. But I mean, honestly, I can't tell. I mean, honestly, from this visual, just the screenshot I'm staring at right now. And maybe if I hit play and let it more of this preview play out more, I might get a little more context clues. But right now, I just I don't know. I, I think it's up in the air for me. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. So, but guys, what did you think about how Nacho went out? How do you feel about everything going on with Jimmy? Which would you do in this situation? Would you rat or would you keep your mouth shut and be a friend of that cartel? Or, you know, what have you? Who Who's in the car? Who do you think it is? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry on the conversation after the video, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, follow me on all my socials. Links to those are down in the description. If you want to see the full length reaction, remember that's on Patreon or if you become a member of the channel, gets you access as well. And speaking of, before we go, I want to shout out to Channel Legends, Manny Sherrett, Ryan, Karen, Philly Bain, Yori, Corey Scott, Margaret Grace, Mary Bradley, Nate Prouty, and Melita. Thank you guys as always for your continued support. But it's another episode down. And I'll see you all next week with episode four of Better Call Saul's final season. Take care, everybody.